First mark of being given over by God. When he is let alone in sinning, when the reins of his lusts are loosed, and he given up to them. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness. Romans chapter 1 verses 28 through 29. Seest thou a man that heretofore had the knowledge of God, and that had some awe of majesty upon him? I say, seest thou such an one sporting himself in his own deceivings, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and walking after his own ungodly lusts? Romans chapter 1 verses 30 through 31. His judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and his damnation slumbereth not. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 13. Dost thou hear, barren professor? It is astonishing to see how those that once seemed sons of the morning and were making preparations for eternal life, now at last, for the rottenness of their hearts, by the just judgment of God to be permitted, being past feeling, to give themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 18 through 19. A great number of such were in the first gospel days, against whom Peter and Jude and John pronounce the heavy judgment of God. Peter and Jude couple them with the fallen angels. And John forbids that prayer be made for them, because that has happened unto them that have happened to the fallen angels that fell, who, for forsaking their first state, and for leaving their own habitation, are reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Jude chapter five or Jude five and six, Second Peter chapter two verse four. Barren fig tree, dost thou hear? Number one, these are all beyond mercy. Number two, these are beyond all promises. Number three, these are beyond all hopes of repentance. Number four, they have no intercessor, nor any more share in a sacrifice for sin. Number five, for these there remains nothing but a fearful looking for of judgment. Number six, wherefore these are the true fugitives and vagabonds that being left of God of Christ, of grace, and of the promise, and being beyond all hope, wander and straggle to and fro, even as the devil their associate, until their time shall come to die, or until they descend in battle and perish. The second mark of being given over by God. Wherefore, they are let alone in hearing. If these at any time come unto the sword, there is for them no God, no Savior of the means of grace, no stirrings of heart, no pity for themselves, no love to their own salvation. Let them look on this hand or that. There they see such effects of the word in others as produce signs of repentance and love to God, and his Christ. These men only have their backs bowed down always. Romans chapter 11, verse 10. These men only have the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, to this very day. Wherefore, as they go to the place of the holy, so they come from the place of the holy and soon are forgotten in the places where they so did. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 10 Only they reap this damage. They treasure up wrath against the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Romans chapter 2 verses 3 through 5 Look to it, barren professor. The third mark of being given over by God 
if he be visited after the common way of mankind, either with sickness, distress, or any kind of calamity, yet still God appeareth not, nor the sanctifying hand of God, nor is there any special mercy mixed with the affliction. But he falls sick, and grows well, like the beast, or is under distress, as Saul, who, when he was engaged by the Philistines, was forsaken and left of God. And the Philistines gathered themselves together, and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. 1 Samuel chapter 28 verses 4 through 6. The Lord answered him no more. He had done with him, cast him off, and rejected him, and left him to stand and fall with his sins by himself. But of this, more in the conclusion. Therefore, I hear forbear. The fourth mark of being given over by God. These men may go whither they will, do what they will. They may range from opinion to opinion, from notion to notion, from sect to sect, but are steadfast nowhere. They are left to their own uncertainties. They have not grace to establish their hearts. And though some of them have boasted themselves of this liberty, Yet Jude calls them wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. It's Jude 13. They are left, as I told you before, to be fugitives and vagabonds in the earth, to wander everywhere, but to abide nowhere, until they shall descend to their own place with Cain and Judas, men of the same fate with themselves. Acts Chapter 1, verse 25. The third sign. A third sign that such a professor is quite past grace when his heart is grown so hard, so stony and impenetrable, that nothing will pierce it. Barren fig tree, dost thou consider? A hard and impenitent heart is the curse of God. A heart that cannot repent is instead of all plagues at once. And hence it is that God said of Pharaoh, when he spake of delivering him up in the greatness of his anger, I will at this time, saith he, send all my plagues upon thine heart. Exodus chapter 9 verse 14. To some men that have grievously sinned under a profession of the gospel, God giveth this token of his displeasure. They are denied the power of repentance. Their heart is bound. They cannot repent. It is impossible that they should ever repent, should they live a thousand years. It is impossible for those fallaways to be renewed again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 through 6. Now to have the heart so hardened, so judicially hardened, this is as a bar to put in by the Lord against the salvation of this sinner. This was the burden of Spira's complaint. I cannot do it. Oh, how I cannot do it. This man sees what he hath done. What should help him? And what will become of him? yet he cannot repent. He pulled away his shoulder before. He stopped his ears before. He shut up his eyes before. And in that very posture, God left him. And so he stands to this very day. I have had a fancy that Lot's wife, when she was turned into a pillar of salt, stood yet looking over her shoulder, or else with her face towards Sodom, as the judgment caught her, so it bound her and left her a monument of God's anger to generation after generation. 
Genesis chapter 19, verse 26. We read of some that are seared with a hot iron, and that are past feeling, for so seared persons are seared parts are. Their conscience is seared, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. The conscience is the thing that must be touched with feeling, fear, remorse, if ever any good be done with the sinner. How then can any good be done to those whose conscience is worse than that? That is, fast asleep in sin, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. For that conscience is, or that conscience that is fast asleep may yet be effectually awakened and saved, but that conscience that is seared, dried as it were, into a cinder, can never have sense, feeling, or the least regret in this world. Barren fig tree, hearken. Judicial hardening is dreadful. There is a difference betwixt that hardness of heart that is incident to all men, and that which comes upon some as a signal or special judgment of God. And although all kinds of hardness of heart in some sense may be called a judgment, yet to be hardened with this second kind is a judgment peculiar only to them that perish. Hardness that is sent as a punishment for the abuse of light received, for a reward of apostasy. This judicial hardness is discovered from that which is incident to all men in these particulars. Number one, it is a hardness that comes after some great light is received because of some great sin committed against that light and the grace that gave it. Such hardness as Pharaoh had after the Lord had wrought wondrously before him, such hardness as the Gentiles had, a hardness which darkened the heart, a hardness which made their minds reprobate. This hardness is also the same with that the Hebrews are cautioned to beware of, a hardness that is caused by unbelief and a departing from the living God, a hardness completed through the deceitfulness of sin, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 12, such as that in the provocation of whom God swear that they should not enter into his rest. It was this kind of hardness also that both Cain and Ishmael and Esau were hardened with after they had committed their great transgressions. Number two, it is the great, greatest kind of hardness, and hence they are said to be harder than a rock or than an adamant, that is, harder than flint, so hard that nothing can enter. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 3 and Zechariah chapter 7 verse 12. Number 3. It is a hardness given in much anger, and that to bind up the soul in an impossibility of repentance. Number 4. It is a hardness, therefore, which is incurable, of which a man must die and be damned. Baron Professor, hearken to this. The fourth sign. A fourth sign that such a professor is quite past grace is when he fortifies his hard heart against the tenor of God's word. Job chapter 9, verse 4, etc. This is called hardening themselves against God and turning of the Spirit against them. At thus, when after a profession of faith in the Lord Jesus, and of the doctrine that is according to godliness, they shall embolden themselves in courses of sin, by promising themselves that they shall have life and salvation notwithstanding. Barren professor, hearken to this. This man is called a root that beareth gall and wormwood, or a poisonful herb, such an one as is abominated of God, yea, the abhorred of his soul. For this man saith, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination or stubbornness of mine heart, to add drunkenness to thirst, an opinion flat against the whole word of God, yea, against the very nature of God himself. Wherefore he adds, 
Then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in God's book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 18 through 20. Yea, that man shall not fail to be effectually destroyed, saith the text. The Lord shall separate that man unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 21. He shall separate him unto evil. He shall give him up. He shall leave him to his heart. He shall separate him to that or those that will assuredly be too hard for him. Now this judgment is much affected when God hath given up a man unto Satan, and hath given Satan leave, without fail, to complete his destruction. I say, when God hath given Satan leave effectually to complete his destruction, for all that are delivered up to Satan have not, nor do not, come to this end. But that is the man whom God shall separate to evil, and shall leave in the hands of Satan to complete without fail, his destruction. Thus he served Ahab, a man that sold himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth the Spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. First Kings 21, verse 25 and 22, verses 20 through 22. Thou shalt persuade him and prevail. Do thy will. I leave him in thy hand. Go forth and do so. Wherefore in these judgments the Lord doth much concern himself for the management thereof because of the provocation wherewith they have provoked him. This is the man whose ruin contriveth and bringeth to pass by his own contrivance. I also will choose their delusions for them. I will bring their fears upon them. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 4. I will choose their devices or the wickedness that their hearts are contriving of. I, even I, will cause them to be accepted of and delightful to them. But who are they that must thus be feared. Why, to those among professors that have chosen their own ways, those whose soul delighteth in their abominations, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusions, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not in the truth but had pleasure and unrighteousness. God shall send them. It is a great word. Yea, God shall send them strong delusions, delusions that shall do, that shall make them believe a lie. Why so? That they all might be damned, every one of them who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. There is nothing more provoking to the Lord than for a man to promise when God threateneth, for a man to delight of conceit that he shall be safe, and yet to be more wicked than in former days. This man's soul abhorreth the truth of God. No marvel, therefore, if God's soul abhorreth him. 
He hath invented a way contrary to God to bring about his own salvation. No marvel, therefore, if God invent a way to bring about this man's damnation. And seeing that these rebels are at this point, we shall have peace. God will see whose word will stand, his or theirs. The fifth sign. A fifth sign of a man being past grace is when he shall at this scoff and inwardly grin and fret against the Lord, secretly purposing to continue his course and put all to the venture, despising the messengers of the Lord. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden under foot the Son of God, etc. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. Wherefore, again, these despisers, God hath set himself, and foretold that they shall not believe, but perish. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Acts chapter 13, verse 41. After that, thou shalt cut it down. Thus far, we have treated of the barren fig tree, or fruitless professor, with some signs to know him by, whereto is added also some signs of one who neither will nor can by any means be fruitful, but they must miserably perish. Now, being come to the time of execution, I shall speak a word to that also. After that, Thou shalt cut it down.